Now I'm going to put my black towel down for this one because I don't want to scratch it up any more than it already is. I don't know if it's necessarily a valuable thing, but it's valuable to me. And that thing is this. This is what I'm assuming is a 1960s Kawai guitar. It could be a Sakai or maybe even a Tiesco. I don't 100% know, but it looks a lot more like a Kawai guitar than anything. It's got some problems. It's missing all of its electronics and its scratch plate. But the things that are really important that it still has is literally the wooden parts. So the body and the neck. It's also got the tailpiece and the saddle. But it also still has the string retention rod or whatever that's called. I can't remember. And the uh, tuning machines that are like six in line all attached together. Now the issues it has are pretty obvious when you look at the face, there's literally nothing. So I'm going to have to either find or make a scratch plate for this and some electronics. I don't know if this is necessarily a valuable guitar, but I kind of want to add a humbucker in the bridge and then put a scratch plate on the front. I don't usually play in neck position. I'm still considering whether or not I want a guitar that has a really finely tuned sounding uh, neck pickup, although I guess you could kind of more technically call this a middle pickup because it's actually pretty far away from the neck compared to what I'm used to. Usually they're like buttered right up against it, but because it has this type of truss rod on it where it's actually like sticking out quite a bit, like almost a whole centimeter, and rather than being like a screwdriver bit, it's got this like hole in the side that you're actually supposed to like stick a screwdriver in and like lever it like that, which is kind of strange, but uh, it's cool. But the biggest problem with this thing is the headstock because it's got a huge split right there that wraps around who about here and it actually goes up the headstock a bit. So I have no idea how I'm going to go about fixing that, but I'm probably going to have to like obviously take this entire thing apart and I'm going to have to try and spread that crack open just a little bit so I can squeeze some glue in there with a syringe as best as possible and then clamp it and let it glue for like 24 hours. And perhaps I might even have to add like a spline or some sort of support in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix that properly. I'm very limited with what I have for fixing things, but I, th I have wood glue, I have clamps, I have all the sorts of saws and drills and stuff and whatnot, so I think I can probably get it good. But obviously I also need to remove the sticker. I don't know if I should leave it on there because it's part of its story or if I should take it off. I'm probably gonna take it off. But the number one thing that makes me most excited about uh, fixing this thing is that this truss rod is actually maxed out in reverse rather than tightened. So it's loosened all the way. I can actually move this thing with my finger, which means that it was never tightened at all or maybe they loosened it. But uh, it's got a slight bow to it. It's actually not too bad. The action is definitely a bit high, but it's probably a result of this old school saddle. I can't remember what these saddles were actually called, but it's definitely very like old school. So my plan today is to remove everything and then address some of the rusting on stuff. Like this is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to clean it up a bit more. The tuning machines are definitely a bit rusty and dirty, so they need to be polished up. I want to make this look as nice as possible. And of course, these little uh, rivets or whatever you call them, the inserts, are missing from the top too, which is kind of suck. And it's going to affect tuning stability a little bit, but I can probably get some more of those. But these tuning machines definitely need to come apart and get cleaned because they are fairly corroded. They feel like they're pretty smooth still, but I want to clean them up a little bit more. Maybe put some uh, sewing machine lubricant in there and just get them as good as possible. I'm not entirely sure what kind of wood was used for the neck, but the body is plywood. It's pretty obvious if you look at this part right here. You can see the different layers of wood and you can see the different layers of wood here. And it's super, super obvious if you look into that cavity, if there's enough light there. Ah, oh, there you go, you can see it. There's definitely some plies showing in the side there. It does have some decent quality acoustic sound. It's nice and bright. But overall, it's time for me to actually like strip this thing apart. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is take this plate off because I actually I don't know how strings get strung up on this sort of thing. And I assume this is just over top of the bridge, and this is just like the palm rest. 
So we'll see. Now the most important tool of the trade is not that screwdriver. It is this. Coffee. But I'm keeping that over there so I don't knock it over on this thing while I'm working. I also need a container for this stuff. Where is my things? I have many things, but I don't know where any of them are. I have like 5,000 different containers laying around my room that I keep parts for things in. I'm going to need to figure out a better way to do things because it just looks like my room is a recycling bin sometimes. And if someone was to tell me my room was a recycling bin, they wouldn't exactly be wrong because there's a lot of reclaimed materials in here as well. So this is essentially where things go to be recycled. And I don't know how this all gets set. Oh, okay. So it's a good thing I loosened the strings first, but it's kind of like wrap around a bit. That is, that is filthy. I don't want to know what that is. I'm going to put that over there for now. Now I think this thing just like lifts off. Yes, it does. Oh, it's got grooves in it. I didn't see that before. That's cool. Well, I guess that means I'm going to have to use a very specific gauge of strings then. Because those are probably perfectly fit for a specific size of string. If anybody knows what this type of saddle is actually called, I would very much appreciate the comments. I am not a professional by any means. I am mildly experienced with maintaining guitars and Lutherian stuff, but I am still learning. So any information that will help me grow as a Luthier, I would very much appreciate it. I will probably buy some new screws for this. No, don't push back in. Oh, come on, man. Now what I'm hoping is that either under this neck plate, on the neck plate, or somewhere, on the neck, there will be some information like a model number or a name or a brand or something. Now for the big reveal. Is there any information under this plate? Uh, there is not. <laughs> is there any information in the neck pocket? Uh, I didn't think so. Yeah, see, there's no hex. It's just like there's a hole, which I imagine is so the end of the truss rod can peek out so it doesn't like bottom out. Um, but it's just got these holes on the side that you just like stick something into and lever it. And this is actually like super loose, loose enough that I can do it with my finger. Let's see if we can focus in on that a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. You can see there's a big old split right there that's running up here and it kind of continues up to here. So I don't know how I'm going to open that up and get glue in there. But it's not too bad of a break, it's just a split. But the next thing I need to do is remove these. And I don't know where my socket set is at the moment. Pull that out. So I'm just gonna... Oh man, they were doubled in. I can't stand when people do that. It's fine if you do it, I mean, it's your guitar, but oh my lord. That's taken apart as much as it can be taken apart. And that is the entire guitar. Completely taken apart, stripped down to every single individual part. I also don't know if you guys saw these, but these like inserts are actually plastic. I thought they were like possibly just like really dirty chrome or something, but uh, no, they are plastic. If I look closer, they probably would have noticed they are plastic. But if I can find metal ones this big, I'm definitely gonna switch to metal. But for now, because they are original, I'm gonna stick them in there. I wanna keep as many parts original as possible, but if a part is original but causing problems, it is going to get replaced. And now it's time for me to basically dust everything down, wipe it clean, make sure there's no like residual dirt or dust on it, and then I'm going to glue this because I can do the rest of the instrument while this is drying. So, uh. I suppose we'll get to that next, but I am going to take a break because that was a long process of trying to get the damn strings out of here. And just in case that part didn't actually get caught on camera, they wound the strings up by putting the string through the hole, pulling it out, putting it through the hole again, and then pulling it out and putting it through the hole again. And when you do that, and then you tighten it up, it knots itself and gets perfectly tight to the tuning machine which makes it very hard to change the strings later, which is why uh, a lot of the strings, when I pulled them out, there were little pieces from the previous string and even a previous, previous string. 
So uh, apparently the person who strung this up many times didn't learn their lesson. So this is a PSA. Don't reinsert the string multiple times. You only really need to put it in once, then loop it around and pull it tight and hold it while you turn the tuning machine. And it'll be perfectly fine. Worst case scenario, you get yourself a locking nut or locking tuning machines and some fine tuners on your bridge and you're fine. Now here's something a little bit strange. I use Dawn and Vinegar to clean stuff and this Dawn and Vinegar has like, despite the fact that it's blue Dawn and the vinegar is clear, it's turned white but it's also got these like mother of pearl flakes in it all of a sudden. That's really really weird. Okay, I've basically soaked this in vinegar as much as I can. Let it sit and soak and kind of break down some of the pre-existing lubricant and grease as well as corrosion. And I'm just gonna like lean this here like this. Let it soak for a bit. I'm also going to do the same for a lot of these. And now let's reassemble. See how it looks while it's together. And look at that. I mean, they were pretty uh, smooth rolling before. But now I can just spin it and it goes down super easy, which is how it should be. But it's got a little tension, so I know it won't like unadjust itself. But there we go. That looks pretty freaking sweet. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. This is the part that's gonna be a challenge to get looking perfect. And yeah, in the future, I will remember to take before and after shot so I can do a side-by-side -side comparison, but uh, I do have a photo of the guitar before doing this. So I will do like a fully assembled guitar before and after when it gets to the point where I can say that it's done. But this one here looks good. I think if I were to lessen the lighting a little bit, yeah, you can definitely see there's a difference now. And now to clean this boy up as much as I possibly can. Oh, I've never actually touched the headstock completely. That is sandpapery as heck, and I think that is dust. So because I don't have any, like, intended for cleaning guitars stuff, I'm just going to use some water. I don't want to put any dish soap or anything onto this. Um, I don't know if you can use, like, leather cleaner or whatever. I'm still doing a lots of learning. So I'm just gonna, you know, do this. I've heard some people just use straight water. Some people use vinegar when they don't have anything. Oh my Lord, that is dirty. It looks better than it did. It's not like a ginormous change, but it definitely has a less grimy look to it. Looks so much better. Now it's time for me to deal with this crack. Okay, I can bend it and lift it with my hand. So it is a pretty deep break, but there's something that I'm gonna have to do to open that crack up. And I think what that is, is I'm going to clamp the neck down here 
and then I'm gonna put a clamp here to open that crack up. And because I don't want to actually like damage the neck or put too many more impressions in it, I'm gonna put this right up here and then I'm going to put the neck block on the back of the neck or the neck plate and see if I can't do it like this. In fact, I'll do the inside of the neck plate just in case this does scratch up the neck plate a bit. Aha! It was hiding. It was very close to where I was looking. But it wasn't in the container I usually put it in. And yes, I realize it's Gorilla Glue. And a lot of people don't like Gorilla Glue for guitar work. But it's worked fine for me and I'm just learning. And I have no intention of melting the glue and opening the crack back up again. So... <laughs> If I were gluing something like a neck into a neck pocket or like a veneer onto the headstock that wasn't structural, I would probably not use Gorilla Glue. But uh, this stuff is never, oh my lord, I haven't touched this glue bottle in a while. Ah, nice and watery. I mean, some might argue it's a little thin, but uh, I needed to get it as deep into that as possible. But feeling it? That feels gooey, okay? So I think that's probably good. Now the scary part. <laughs> okay, here's the scary part. I'm gonna clamp far away for leverage. Oh, this is terrifying. Okay, this is gonna be weird, but I need to listen. That's as open as I want that to be. And it'll probably open a little bit more as it sits here. And I don't want to leave it like this too long. But the plan here is to put glue on the crack and then go And now, wipe the excess glue off of everything. I don't think that's enough glue. But we'll see if this crack closing up. Oh, look at that. A lot of glue squeezed out of that crack. Make sure there's no glue on anything that I don't want there to be glue on before I, you know, do anything else. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Sque ah, squeeze out. I just sprayed myself with water. But now I gotta clamp this headstock down like this. Okay, I'm actually gonna bring myself in a little deeper this way. You get squeeze out along the entire crack. Okay, I feel resistance and that's when I'm gonna stop. That clack, clack. This crack looks uh, pretty closed up. It's, it can still close farther because there's still squeeze out when I tighten it. But I got about 20 minutes of open time before it starts to really set at all. Okay, there's no more, there's not enough, a significant amount of squeeze out still happening, so I'm calling that good. This is gonna dry for at least 12 hours before I take the clamps off. So I'm gonna call this good. We'll have to do some cleanup once it's dry, but I'm gonna keep checking on it and wiping away any squeeze out that I see. And to celebrate not breaking the headstock off even more, peace tea. Yeah, I would have a cider, but I don't have a cider, but I have this. And this is strawberry lemonade, which is so good. I'm gonna go enjoy this. I will see you guys again in most likely 24 hours, cause that's as long as I'm gonna clamp this up. It's been two to three hours since I glued this up and based on the instructions on the bottle, it says 
20 to 30 minutes with clamps and then remove clamps and leave it for 24 hours basically. So uh, this is the point where I learn whether or not that gap is going to open again and oh my lord it did not. But I think I've decided to take this sticker off. But one of my concerns is that this sticker has this crease right here. Not even a crease, it looks like it's cut right through the sticker. And I'm worried that someone like took a knife to it or something. gunk off oh no there's still some residue on the side here probably and it's only for a quick second now for the body I have this like plastic sheet that I actually pulled out of an old broken computer monitor and it's the perfect thing to be uh, creating a template for a pick guard on here I've traced out the routed cavity as well as kind of picked a shape that I thought I might like. This could be changed later, but I needed a starting point because I have to measure how big of a sheet of plastic I'm going to need. But that's basically done, so I can remove this now. And I can like set this aside for when I actually get uh, to measuring out the plastic I'm going to need. Now i got to take these stickers off. Thankfully these are much smaller. And these are newer. Some dust and whatnot in here. And just doesn't have to be perfect on the inside of the cavity. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all off. And I'm definitely going to have to buff the finish after this. But uh, I thought that white paint was going to be a lot harder to get off. It's a slight difference. A lot of the surface paint came off. It's the stuff on the edge here where there's a bunch of dings. The paint is just like it's in there then we'll get a much better idea of what it's going to look like once it is finally completely reassembled. I don't know if I have any pickups laying around. I know I have a humbucker, but I'm not sure if I have any modern Singer coil. Singer. Gosh. Like a single coil. I know I have a humbucker, but a humbucker is not going to fit in here. This probably had something like a P90 in it, but I don't actually know for sure. I can probably get stuff mounted back on soon. It has been 24 hours. I reassembled the guitar and I put some strings on it, even though it has no electronics at the moment, just to see if it could handle string tension in D standard, because that's generally what I play in. These are also heavier gauge strings, so tuning it up to E would probably put more tension on the neck, and I don't really want to do that if I don't have to, and again, since I play in D standard, this is essentially what I'll be playing it in all the time anyway, and I can't really do that much of a demo, because, well, there's no electronics in it, so I can't plug it into an amp or anything, and I don't have a contact mic set up, so getting this thing mic'd up, it's just, it's not acoustic, so you're not really going to hear much. But I will put a little bit of a mic'd up demo at the, like, the credits of this video. But anyways, it sounds pretty good, it holds strong tension, it's been holding tune for a decent amount of time obviously I haven't taken it to a chromatic tuner to make sure it's like perfectly in tune so it's going to sound a little out of tune but overall it 
Sounds pretty good. I mean, acoustically, it sounds pretty good. I think I might actually do a single coil pickup up here and put a, a contact mic in here somewhere as well and have like a two-way switch to switch between the two because I do like the sound of the acoustic nature of an electric guitar as well. Um, obviously, it's probably going to be a relatively budget contact mic, but at some point, I will upgrade this thing to much better stuff. I ordered a very cheap single coil just for the neck um, as well as an output jack. I have some piezos laying around and I need to figure out what material I'm going to use for the pickguard, but that's pretty much it for the first episode of this sort of series of getting this thing playing again. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. When I have more information about this specific guitar, I will definitely update you guys, and I'm sorry I'm not wearing like a lav mic today. I'm still working on my uh, camera setup and stuff. I'd like to have a microphone dedicated to this camera at some point. But uh, for now, that's about it. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Shred on, my boys! I suck.